and welcome to another session on sequential circuits. Today we'll take a look at a type of flip-flop called a JK flip-flop. And the JK flip-flop is interesting because it allows four different functions to be performed all within the same flip-flop. Two of those functions are shown here on the introductory slide, set and reset. And as we can see from the timing diagram, this JK flip-flop is trailing edge triggered, meaning that the output will only change when the clock is going from high to low. Now when J is equal to 1, as is true of the first trailing edge, and K is equal to 0, the function of the flip-flop is called set, which forces the output to go high, regardless of what else is going on. In contrast, when j is 0 and k is equal to 1, that's called the reset condition, and the output will go to 0 regardless of what's going on with the previous history of the circuit. Now the JK flip-flop is multi-talented and can also do the hold function, which the D flip-flop did very well, and the toggle function, which is something we've seen before with the toggle or T flip-flop. The JK flip-flop accommodates all four of those functions, and they're shown here in the functional truth table. Four total functions, toggle and hold, we've looked at before, and set and reset, which are new functions for this particular flip-flop. The symbol is very similar to other flip-flops, except now we have two inputs, J and K. As before, we have one control signal for a flip-flop, which is the clock. The triangle indicates that the effect of the clock is inverted, meaning that this is a trailing edge triggered flip-flop and will only change when the clock is going from high to low. And finally, we have two outputs to the flip-flop, Q and its inverse, Q0. So let's take a look at how we implement this. But before we do that, let's expand the functional truth table to the complete truth table, which expresses all possible combinations of the inputs, as well as the present state. Let's look at a few examples here. When j is equal to 0 and k is equal to 0, we're in the hold state. In the hold state, that means the next state of q and q0 will simply be equal to the present state. So in the second line of the truth table, the present state of q is zero, 1, and it remains 1 in the next state. q0 is 0, and it remains 0 in the next state. In another example, let's look at this fifth line of the truth table, where we are in the set condition. In the set condition, what happens is that regardless of what the present state of q is, the next state will be 1 for q and 0 for its inverse, q0. And as a last example in this eighth line of the truth table, j and k both equal to 1 implies that we're in a toggle function. So the present state of q and q0 will toggle in the next trailing edge of the clock. That means if q is equal to 1, it will become 0, and q0 equal to 0 will toggle and become 1. So how do we implement this critter called the jk flip-flop? Let's take a look. Here's one possible implementation of the JK flip-flop. And for purposes of explaining, we'll let you know on a secret that this is a leading edge triggered flip-flop. So the outputs will only be able to change when the clock is going from low to high. So let's first take a look at what happens when J and K are both zero. The clock has just gone high and the leading edge, J and K are both zero, and the output of a NAND gate we know is only equal to zero when all the inputs are one. So since at least one of the NAND gates, NAND1 and NAND2, have an input of zero, we know that the corresponding output must be equal to one, because the only condition under which we would get a zero is when all three of these inputs are also equal to 1. So then we can go into the next NAND gate, and 
now we know the output of NAND3 and NAND4 is going to depend on the other input, this input and this input. So let's take a look at what happens. When the input to NAND3 is equal to 1 and Q0 is equal to 1, what we'll get at the output is 0. And when the input to the remaining input to NAND3 Q0 is equal to 0, what we get at the output will be 1. So what we see here is that when we put Q0 into NAND3, we get the inverse, which by, defini by definition is equal to Q at the output. So given that we put Q0 into NAND3 as the second input, what comes out is just Q. And the same is true for NAND4. Q is being fed into that second input of NAND4. And given the logic of the NAND gate, what comes out is Q0. So since Q is equal to Q and Q0 is equal to Q0, that essentially defines the hold condition. So when the inputs J and K are both 0, we'll simply hold the present state in producing the next state of the flip-flop. Now things get a little trickier as we get into other combinations. And for the purposes of discussion of how to trace signals through these logic gates that have quite a bit of feedback, we'll just take a look at one input combination when j is equal to 1 and k is equal to 0. Now for this particular slide, what we're going to look at is when the inputs j, k are equal to 1, 0, and the present state q is 0 and q0 is equal to 1. So let's take a look at what happens when that's the case. J is equal to 1. The clock has just gone high because it wouldn't be changing. The output of the circuit wouldn't be changing otherwise. And K is equal to 0. Now we know from the previous slide that when any input to a NAND gate is 0, we know that the output will always be 1. So this output that we've labeled O2 is always going to be equal to 1. So we don't have to recalculate that every time we trace signals through the circuit. In order to understand what the output O1 is, we need to know what Q0 is. Well, in the condition we're considering, Q0 is equal to 1. And 1 NAND1 one, NAND one will give us an output of 0. Now we're ready to calculate the output of NAND3 and NAND4. For NAND3, the inputs now are 0 and the present state of Q0, which is equal to 1. 0 NAND1 is simply 1, so our next state of the output Q will be 1. And NAND4, Q is the other input to the NAND4 gate, and in this scenario, it's equal to 0. 0 NAND1 is equal to 1, so our next state of Q0 will also be 1. Now, to understand whether this is the final and stable state of the next state, we have to do the same thing again until we start to see the pattern repeat itself. So let's take a look at the next cycle of tracing signals through the circuit. The input J is still equal to 1, K is still equal to 0, but now the input, the present state of Q and Q0 are 1 and 1, which we took from our previous cycle of tracing through the circuit. Now the inputs to NAND1 are equal to 1, J is still equal to 1, and Q0 is still equal to 1, so the output of NAND1 is still equal to 0. Now when we take 0 NAND with the other input to the NAND3, Q0 is now equal to 1. Q0 is equal to 1 here, so 0 NAND0 zero is still equal to 1. So the next state of Q is still 1. And for the last gate, the NAND4 gate, the output of NAND2 remains 1 because K is still 0. And the last input to NAND4 gate is just Q, which is now equal to 1. 1 NAND0 is equal to 0, 
so our next state of q0 is equal to 0. But since we've seen a change now in the states in tracing the signals twice, we need to do it one more time to see if they'll remain stable. And only when the outputs or the next state has remained stable for the second cycle can we say that we've actually corrected, computed the correct values of the next state, q and q0. So in the next cycle, j is still 1, k is equal to 0, and the present state of q and q0 are 1 and 0. So now let's go ahead and trace that through our circuit here. j is still equal to 1, k is still equal to 0, the clock is still high, and the last input to NAND1 now is equal to the new value of q0, which is now 0. 0 NAND1, NAND1 gives us an output of 1. The new q0 is equal to 0, so 1 NAND0 is equal to 1, and that's the next state of q. And our intermediate output O1 is equal to 1. And the next state of q0 now is 1 NAND Q, which is 1 NAND Q, which is equal to 0. Now we've seen that the next state remains constant through two tracing cycles, so now we can say for sure that when the inputs J and K are equal to 1 and 0, and the present state is 1 and 0, that the next state will also be 1 and 0. Now that's pretty tedious. And we can do it for another cycle, but we've only done half of the input combination j equal 1 and k equal to 0. The other half is when j equal 1 and k equal 0, and q is equal to 1 rather than 0. We can follow the same type of logic through this tracing sequence, and we'll find that it's actually a little bit simpler. And without going into a lot of detail here, in this scenario, when j is equal to 1, k equal to 0, and the present state of q is 1, and q0 is equal to 0, our outputs will be 1 and 0. And as we repeat that sequence one more time, 1, 0 with the present state of 1, 0, we'll find that the outputs are remain the same. So this cycle was a little simpler to analyze because it only took two tries to get a repetition of the next state and for the circuit to stabilize in that set condition. So we can repeat this process through all possible input combinations. We took a look at both hold conditions and arrived at the proper next state for the hold condition. We also took a look at both set conditions and arrived at the proper condition for the next state of q and q0, and we could apply this tracing procedure to both reset and toggle for both possible input conditions. Now this process can get tedious, but tracing signals one at a time through one clock cycle at a time is a way to get an accurate answer from these fairly complicated circuits that have quite a bit of feedback in them as is true with the JK flip-flop. So the JK flip-flop kind of gives us the best of all worlds. It gives us the function of the D flip-flop and the hold condition, the function of the toggle flip-flop with a 1-1 one, one input condition, and the functions of the set reset latch with JK equal 1-0 and 0-1 respectively. Like other flip-flops, the JK flip-flop can either be trailing or negative edge triggered, or leading or positive edge triggered. Changing output states when the clock goes from high to low or low to high, respectively. And the JK flip-flop can be implemented using NAND gates as well as other possible combinations of logic gates that deliver the same function. Well, that's all today for the JK flip-flop. Thanks for joining us as we continue to explore the world of digital logic and circuits, and we hope you'll join us again soon.